So just this week, one of my most beloved active bands, Future Islands, dropped their new album by the title The Far Field. So in this week's episode of Rambling Reviews, I'm going to be discussing some of the finer points of this album, get into the lyrics and the composition behind the music. So without further ado, let's get straight to the review. <laughs> are a heavily passion-driven synth-pop and alternative rock outfit coming out of Baltimore, USA, who have mastered and defined their own unique sound and style. That seems to be a fusion of the emotional honesty and vulnerability of artists like Morrissey and The Cure, combined with the synth and program drum-driven sound of acts like New Order and Simple Minds, making for a handsome fusion of the romanticism of the past with production and aesthetics of the present. Now, over the last 10 years, Future Islands have built up a significant discography of innovative and expressive albums, such as their 2010 project, In The Evening's Air, and their latest album release, 2014 Singles, which happens to be one of my favourite albums of that year. I mean, I've just fallen in love with their sound, and I could not wait to hear their next piece of work, particularly after hearing the first single for this album, Ran, which you can see my review of here, by the way. Now, this album is really no departure from the model that the band have generated over their last 10 years and it features everything I love about their previous projects, such as the captivating vocal performance of Samuel T. Herrin and the sharp, bubbly bass lines of William Cashon. Now take, for example, the track Cave, that I feel is a summation of everything comprising Future Islands, as it immediately draws you in with that awe-inspiring synth line that warps in and out like the tides of the ocean, eventually breaking on the shore as we are met with just the most just the most Future Island style bassline ever that weaves under the track, always providing such a firm and driving foundation for the songs to be built upon. Now, this is a style that has really helped define the band's unique sound. Now, Cave is actually one of the most hard-hitting songs on the album, for me anyway, with the super nostalgic programmed drums that harken back to the days of artists like The Human League that are layered over fantastically subtle live drummings of, I believe it's uh, Michael Lowry playing the drums, but to be honest, it's kind of hard to tell who is actually drumming for these guys. Uh, now, this song appears to be an anthem about doubt, and the power that doubt can hold over your mind, as Samuel is sharing his fear of being trapped or controlled by himself or by others. And as he said himself during a live performance of this song in Austin, Texas, this song is about the desperate need to let go of your ideals and your beliefs. Spoken like a true poet. And speaking of poetry, I get the sense that Samuel's alter ego, Hemlock Ernest, Herring's rap moniker, has had some input into the vocal delivery of a few songs on this album, namely the opening track, Aladdin. Now, this is not to say that he is attempting to rap the lyrics, but rather that his use of wordplay, particularly on the opening verse, demonstrates his talents as a wordsmith, chaining words together in a very interesting and unique way. Now, as a side point, it's time for a full Hemlock Ernest album, Samuel. The world is ready. Now, next I want to talk about the track, Shadows, that features the radiant vocals of none other than Deborah Harry, Blondie herself, as she contributes her iconic voice to this beautiful duet that contrasts in the most satisfying, satisfying way against the distinctive growl of Samuel's voice, making for a very refreshing song, preparing to bring this album to its end with the song Black Rose. Now, I feel that Black Rose was a perfect song to close up this album, as it explores the loss of something you once thought special. As Samuel is singing about the impact of love lost, and as as his relationship that once meant so much to him was like a piston, first filling up, then exploding and subsequently withdrawing and leaving a vacuum in its place. A perfect way to conclude this album that has explored so many feelings of entrapment, fear and freedom in such a personal way. Now, before I start to round off this through, I really briefly want to talk about the first single for this album, Ran. Now, I do say briefly, because as I mentioned earlier, I already have a video talking about this song, and I feel I covered it in enough depth. However, now knowing the song's full context in this album, I do want to touch upon it, as this song, I feel, encapsulates the prevailing theme of Farfield, as it particularly explores the need for freedom. As Samuel is singing about his need to run away from the arms of the past that he once ran to, as this seems to be the overarching emotion encoded into this album, take for example the song Beautiful Road, The Beauty of the Road rather, a perfect driving anthem that explores the breakdown of his relationship that has since inspired so many of his songs. As he's singing about leaving for the road in the pursuit of a dream that compromised a dream he already had. Now this is a very somber reflection and I appreciate Samuel's openness in sharing it. However, this song is not all about looking back at the past with regret, but about moving forward and about the beauty of the road. And it is beautiful. Okay, so my last thoughts on this album are gonna be, 
one, that I'm super grateful for it. As I said, I adore this band and their music really speaks to me and will, for that reason, always hold a special place in my heart. And two, that I was a little bit disappointed with this album because it didn't really bring much new to the table. I was excited to hear something a little bit different from this project. However, my final and third thought is I'm glad they didn't. I feel this album is the most focused iteration of the band's sound. They have evolved and matured so much over the years, and this has only helped define the band, who they are and what kind of music they want to make. And I can't even try to argue with that. In fact, I wouldn't want to. Farfield represents the, dis the distance this band have travelled to establish themselves artistically and culturally. A remarkable album that has stayed true to the band and their fans whilst continuing to progress and gain mainstream traction. In fact, I really feel that this band need to gain mainstream attention because I feel this is music for everyone, whether it's a heartbreaking kid or the old soul looking back on a life filled of both joy and regret. Alright, so last things last, I have this week's recommended listening list. For this first video, just a few songs that make a nice accoutrement for this album, starting with Every Day Is A Like Sunday by Morrissey, and Don't Forget Don't You Forget About Me by Simple Minds, and The Great Fire by Future Islands. So that's going to have to do it for this week's episode of Rambling Reviews. Honestly, I could keep rambling on about this album and this band for hours, but I'm going to have to leave it there, because in the future, I'm sure I will uh, come back to some of their other albums and uh, talk about some of them, some more of their library. Uh, if you would like to see them in future videos, then be sure to subscribe to Mesa's Music Library here on YouTube. Also check us out on Facebook and Instagram, both linked in the description box below. I can't tell you what your collaboration with this, with this channel would mean to me, as I am just in love with making these videos and having the opportunity to share, my, share and discuss the music that I love with anyone who is interested. So thank you once again for joining me, Carl Mason, here for Mason's Music Library. I wish you all the best and I will see you in the next episode of Rambling Reviews. Take it easy.